health level. And um, I am a certified professional resume writer and I'm a licensed coach. And I haven't always done this, so this is probably my sixth uh, career. But know that uh, whatever you get, as soon as you get out of school, you probably won't have that job for the rest of your life. You'll probably have a lot of different jobs, which is really a good thing because you're going to learn something from every job that you have. I have a degree in education. I taught school. And uh, my background is in sales. Uh, I was the second woman in the trucking industry in 1977. You can imagine me in the trucking industry. And um, I was also a director of Mary Kay Cosmetics as well. So I've had a lot of different jobs, a lot of different careers. This career that I have right now as a resume writer and career coach is the best. I've been doing this for 20 years. I've had my own company since 15. And I will share with you, I don't know everything about everything, but I will share with you the information that I've had and how I have helped my clients. Because the most important for me is to make a difference in your life and help you through the job search process. And um, just want to share with you, if you have any questions, raise your hand, because sometimes I never know where it's coming from, and I want to make sure that we do have our questions answered. And if you want to ask a question while I'm lecturing, that's fine. If you want to wait till we're done, that's also fine. How many people here have a resume? Okay, how many people here are happy with their resumes and know for sure that, that they're good? Boy, nobody's raising their hand. I just want to tell you, as we walk through this, if, if as you're going through the job search process, if you can afford to have it done professionally, I would definitely recommend it. And there are a lot of good resume writers in the Valley. Uh, there's uh, an organization called the Resume Writers Council of Arizona, and that is, let me just put on here, rwca.org. If you decide that you want to have it done professionally, besides myself, there are other people on that website that you can go to that are all very good resume writers. Okay, so you've got your papers in front of you. We're going to go through some very, very basics. So what I want you to do is take your resume and make notes on it as we go. Because if you don't, you're going to forget. Okay? All right. So the first thing I want you to do when you look at your resume is, does it have a designated title at the top? For example, if you're in sales, it might say sales director or it could say um, sales representative. You've got to have a designated title at the top because they're not going to know what you're going for if you don't have it. Now, look at your job posting and see what is, the, what is that job title that you're going after because titles can change. For example, if you're in sales, all the different names for somebody in sales would be sales representative, account manager, sales representative, territory manager. You can change that title that, to match what's in the job posting. You know, that's very, very important because somebody reading it, then they may not know what you're really going for. As long as everything underneath that title supports what you're going for. Look at the top. Do you have your contact information? Okay. You don't have to put addresses on anymore. You don't do that. What you can put is Metropolitan Phoenix. Your, your email address, your LinkedIn URL, and how many people in this room are on LinkedIn? Everybody should be on LinkedIn. And your email address, phone number. Now, if you have uh, Yahoo or AOL, take that off because it should be a Gmail account. So if you have Hotmail, excuse me, um, uh, Yahoo or AOL, it will look like you're not technically up to par. A lot of older people have that. We always have to change it. So that's what you should have at the top. You should have your header with all your contact information. Then your job title should go next. If you look on this, right here at the top, it explains and tells you exactly what to put there. And then your designated title goes next. Okay? Now, after that, you have to have a summary statement. How many people are going to have objectives on their resume? Take it off. We don't do an objective anymore. 
An objective focuses on what you want for yourself, doesn't it? Everything in that resume should show what you bring to the table, what you can do for the prospective employer. Now, they are only interested in two things. Can you meet the qualifications of the position? So can you make money? Is that what they want you for? So you have to make sure that you show that in your resume. So in addition to a summary statement, which should be a paragraph, underneath that you have to have core competencies or key skills, uh, key qualifications. Those are bulleted or uh, skills that go here, and it can be in a linear fashion or it can be in tables, however you do it. How many of you really have heard of applicant tracking software? Okay. Companies now are using applicant tracking software to uh, screen the resumes and kick out the ones that they don't want. Now, years ago, maybe about seven years ago, um, they were very, very particular as to how a resume was formatted. But now there's about 200 different applicant tracking software systems out there. So the most important thing is have the keywords in your resume, as many keywords as possible throughout the whole document so that the applicant tracking software will accept it. Now, years ago, applicant tracking software would not take tables. It would not take boxes, but now it's a little bit more uh, free where you can be a little bit more creative in your resume. Okay, so you'll notice in this that it's got certain uh, designated um, uh, sections, okay? Now, in most cases, your education goes at the bottom. Now, if you're a current student or currently in school and going to graduate shortly, it will go up at the top. So, if your personal experience has a lot to do with it. If you're an older person and have a degree, but maybe you're going back to school, your education is going to go at the bottom. But for students, they should go pretty much at the top so they can see that you're currently what you're currently doing. Okay, the next thing is um, the professional experience. You want to be consistent. Name of company, city, state, date. Now, there's also a question, do I put the months? I don't put months. There's only certain situations where I do put months, but it's not my preference when I write a resume. Now, um, so the second thing that comes after your name of company, city, state, is your position title. Whatever it is that you held, that goes next. If it's a uh, project manager or sales consultant or um, stalker or whatever it is, that goes next. Then a brief description that tells the reader what you what you, what you were hired to do. Okay, you have to have that description there. Underneath that are your bullet points. Your bullet points show results. Now this is really really important. Each bullet point starts with an action verb. You can find a bunch of action verbs online. All you have to do is say action verbs, and you're going to get a bunch of them. What would be an example of an action verb? Anybody? Implemented? Initiated? Streamlined? Created? There are tons of them. But you've got to start each bullet point with a verb, action verb. Now, if you're currently employed, your verb is going to be in the present tense. So watch your tenses. If it's something that you've done in the past, it's going to be past tense. Now, try to quantify what you've done. For example, if you are an administrative assistant and you're answering phones, you don't say in your resume, answer phones. You want to say numbers of calls that came in. Answer 400 calls within a two hour period because that gives them more information as to what you can offer them and gives them better depth into your responsibility. Yeah. How specific should we get? So if I have like inventory merchandise on, should I be putting a specific price? Well, uh, try to give a depth and breadth of the, of the, is it a warehouse? Yeah, so like would it be better to put thousands of dollars worth of inventory? Or, or numbers. Specific? Well, let's say, uh, so you have trucks coming in and yeah. you're loading trucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these trucks are backed up to the dock. Yeah. So try to give an idea how many packages go through 
your your uh, your area. Yeah. Let's say for example, you can take stock twenty five hundred packages inbound per day with an eight hour shift or something like that. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But make sure you can get some quantities in there. Okay. Very important to get numbers. That's what they're looking for. Now, you want to have no more than seven bullet points. No more than seven. And what's really, really important, I want you to write this down, but you, and it says here, put them in order of importance. The most important um, accomplishment goes first, and then the least goes at the bottom. Because somebody could read your resume and go through the whole thing, and maybe read only the first two bullets under each position. So you want to make sure that you've got the most important ones listed first, in order of importance. Put the least at the bottom, the least important one at the bottom. No more than seven bullets. Okay, um, now at the bottom, if you've got any volunteer experience, you can put that at the bottom. Any memberships, you can put that at the bottom. Awards, now if you've got awards or honors and you're on scholarship, you can also include that in the education course of your resume. Yes? When we write our service, when we write our service, we always do write how many hours we work with the service. Numbers, numbers, numbers are very important if you can get numbers in there because that's what they're looking for. It doesn't matter what you did, it matters what you contributed to the company and the quality of your contribution. So everything is going to be measured in that resume, yes. Um, do you include every single job you've ever worked at? Because, like, for example, I've already worked, this is almost my fifth job since I was 16. Oh, so it depends. Okay. It depends on what it is. I mean, she asked if so you put every single job. Mm -hmm. It depends. Now, um, a resume is a marketing tool. A um, application is a legal document. So if you're writing, you may not want to put everything here. But when you do the application, include everything. Because if it's a legal document at the bottom, you sign it and say this is true, blah, 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 blah. Okay? There are times when you don't put everything in a, an application, but I won't go into that right now. It probably doesn't include or concern anybody here. But remember, an application is a legal document. You've got to tell the truth. Okay, no lying. Lying is not acceptable anyway. But since it's a legal document, they're going to check um, to make sure you're who you say you are. Okay, uh, publications and blogs, you can also put that at the bottom. And you, you can see how I differentiated the different areas. Make sure you do that at the bottom too. I just didn't have room here. Now, um, technical. There are certain times when, let's say if you're a software engineer or something that's really highly technical, where you would want to state all of your te technical expertise or your proficiency, it could go underneath where you uh, did it or it could go in a separate section. So each one of these is really kind of a creative thing, so you have to really judge each thing individually to decide how you want to present your, your, um, your qualifications. Okay, um, now what do we say? Target the headline. Don't forget that that's really, really important. No objective. I want you to focus on, when you are writing your resume, what you can do for the company. Doesn't matter what you want for yourself. Remember the old objectives would be to find a position where I can advance. That's how we used to write them years ago. But don't do that anymore. Just have a summary statement. Um, now, there are two types of uh, resume style. Functional, <coughs> has anybody heard of a functional resume? No? Reverse chronological, that's what I want you to write. I want you to start with the most recent thing and work backwards when it comes to your professional work history. There are times when a functional resume may work, but in all, most instances, I want you to do reverse chronological, which is what I showed you. Now, if your resume goes to two pages uh, at the top, this is what you want at the top of the second page. Your name, uh, page two, uh, phone number, and email address. That would be at the top of the second page. You don't have to have a big header 
like you would on your first page where your name is a little bit bigger and it's a little bit more creative. Now, keywords are important. So when you look at job descriptions, you want to look at the keywords in the job description. And you want to put them throughout your whole, the whole resume in different areas. Let's say if you're in sales, it would be increased revenue. Revenue is important in sales. If you are a project manager, it might be efficiency, on time, completion of projects. You want to take that word that's so important, it should be more than one, and put it several times, more than several times throughout the whole resume. Because remember, that applicant tracking software is going to count the number of keywords you have that match within the job description that you're going for. Um, let's see. Now, um, volunteer experience, volunteer can also count for experience. So if you are, let's say, unemployed, which a lot of times students are, you can use your volunteer experience Oops. In, the, in the professional experience section. You can use it and put the dates there. And that will show that even though you're not working, that you're doing something useful. The volunteer experience can either go in the professional experience or it can go in the uh, volunteer at the bottom. Now make sure your dates are consistent. Sometimes you're going to have gaps in the dates, but uh, being able to explain maybe you took some time off, maybe you did some traveling, but make sure that um, all the dates are consistent. Um, now, pronouns. You don't say, I initiated. You start everything with initiated. In a resume, the I is understood. You don't have I, we, our, none of the pronouns go in there. It's all understood. Initiated, implemented, streamlined, built, provided, managed, supervised. It all starts with action verbs. The I is understood. You never say I implemented or I created. Get that out of there because it's not professional. Now, when you are writing the uh, bullet points, here's a bullet point. It starts with an action verb provided, blah, blah, blah. Make sure you have a period at the end of each phrase. These are not complete sentences where you have a subject and a verb. They are phrases. They start with verbs. But you still need a period at the end. Now, if you decide you don't want to put periods at the end of each phrase, make sure that it's consistent throughout the whole document. I put periods at the end of each phrase. That's the way I write. Um, have somebody else look at the resume before you send it out. Because let me tell you, it's very easy to overlook a typo. I realized it did my grandson's resume, and I realized it had a typo in it. But nobody noticed it. The recruiter didn't notice it. We just assumed that nobody else noticed it either. But if you send something out and you see later there's a typo, or the grammar is not correct, you're not going to be very happy. So let a second set of eyes look at that resume and read it over. And read it over several times, several times before you send it out to make sure that it's exactly the way you want it. OK, um, references available upon request. How many people have that at the end of their resume? Nobody? Good. We don't need that anymore. So make sure you don't have. Um, um, that at the end, but watch your tenses. Remember, if it's something that you're currently doing, it should be in present tense. If it's something that you already did, it should be in past tense. Any questions so far? Yeah. Should references be included with the jobs, or what's that? Should you include references along with the no, jobs? No, no, okay. no. Okay. No. If you have references and you want to take them to an interview, it should, first of all, they should not go with your resume. A lot of people have a third page with references. It's not, not acceptable. Do not include resume, uh, references. When you go to the interview, don't give them to the interviewer. You give them only if you're asked, okay, because it's inappropriate. 
but they ask you for references, you're pretty, pretty serious about getting an offer. But I mean, there's certain, certain rules that you should follow, certain protocol when it comes to interviewing that's really, really important. I've heard that they like companies don't like having two pages of resume. Okay, one page or two. So like, should we just always okay. keep one or? One or two, okay. Good question. It depends. If I have somebody that's had a very long work experience, let's say they've been in the workforce 25 years, well, one page is not gonna work for them. Don't sell yourself short. It's okay to go to a second page. But in most cases, I don't know that anybody would have a full second page, but uh, maybe a page and a half. If it's a page and you go to the second page, it's maybe a little bit of a line here. What you do on your first page is widen your margins and keep everything on one page if you can. If you can't, it's okay to go to a second page, but make sure you have the contact information and put a paper clip on it. If you go to the interview, they don't usually staple them, and I can't tell you why, but usually a paper clip is what we do. Let's see if there's anything else that I need to talk over. Okay, let's say, um, I don't think there's anybody in this room that has 25 years of experience or even 20 years, okay. Uh, but if that's the case, sometimes there is a, a company that they've worked for maybe 25 years ago. This is just information that you might, that might help you a little bit. And um, it's, uh, it would age that person if we put it in there. So what I do is I put it in without the dates. Let's say if it's Motorola or Raytheon or somebody that they really need to know that that person's worked for, I won't put the dates. I'll put an additional experience. So any questions on the resume or anything? Yes? What about, you said something about months, you don't put months, you just do You can months. if you want, okay. you can if you want. I don't put months, the only time I put months is, let's say that somebody, let's say la 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 la, uh, 2000 to 2018, and it's in December. Then they have, um, let's see, I'm just trying to think how to explain this. Uh, and then they started here in 2019 uh, to present or something. If I, no, wait a minute, like this 2017. And if I don't put December here, it might look like they were off the whole year. So in that case, I would put the months because if they end of them in December and you're starting January, if I don't put the months, it looks like they were off for one whole year. So so if you want to put the months, that's okay. It's up to you. It's up to you if you want to do that. It's not wrong. Uh, I just don't do it. I just don't do it. And the other question, I think there was a question yet. Um, I put down that I was a middle school teacher, um, but I didn't, I didn't do it through a company or anything. That's so, okay. so what should we do about uh, putting like the name of company and then school? Like school, school would work for the name of a company. Okay. Yeah, he said he was a tutor, a middle, middle school tutor. It's not a company would be the name of the school, but it's just the same thing as this one paid your salary or who you did it for. Make sure you put the city and state too. You put, uh, what school was it? It was, it was back in. Okay, so such and such school, Phoenix, Arizona, or Chicago, Illinois, the date that you did it, and then middle middle uh, school tutor, and then how many students, what the subject matter was, how you measured your attention, all that's important. You should have probably about three bullets underneath that. Any other questions? Yes. Um, do you recommend a certain font size in the resume? What? Do you recommend a certain font size of the resume? Okay. Font size. Font size. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Times New Roman. Does everybody know what Times New Roman is? That's, um, that's, don't use that anymore. I use Calibre. I stole it right, I don't know if I did. And I think I used it on this cover letter. And I like it because it's very, very contemporary. And I go, I do 11.5. That's the font size I use. And what I do is I put all eight around the whole thing, always at the top, always at the bottom, always on each side. But let's say that I go over to the second page and I kind of scrunch on the second page, but it's not enough. Then what I'll do is I'll change this to 06, the bottom to 06, 
and all eight on the side because remember I said oops, um, if it goes to the second page but you haven't got enough take it back to the first page and kind of widen the margins a little bit so it all fits you have to kind of plunk as you go kind of thing because you never know what it's going to look like until you finish the whole thing then you have to make some adjustments does that make sense okay thank you for bringing us that thought that was good okay um let's see if i missed any other questions on the resume part okay let's go to the cover letter now this is a template now i have put little stars by the things because i have them in red and there was not a color figure here those are the things that are changeable now your um header at the top should match your resume make sure it's the same as your resume that way up it kind of looks like a set okay and then you want your date now remember you can change that date but have a good cover letter to use create one that you can use as a template and that way you won't have to change everything every time you send out a resume okay so it says date changes you need and obviously the name of the company is going to change it depends what the name of the company is uh, if you have a name you can put that name on there uh, the city the state the email address however uh, that is next position title put re colon position title because they have to know what it's referencing it could be project manager it could be stalker it could be sales executive it could be anything that you might be going for if you're sending a cover letter make sure you've got the position title now if you don't have a name you leave that line everything with a little star is changeable paragraph one now your resume is objective Your cover letter is more subjective. You can use pronouns. I've always wanted to be a teacher. I can't wait to get in the classroom. Talk about your passion for what you're doing. Talk about your passion for the possibility of getting hired by the company for this particular job that you're going after. So that should explain your background. Passion for what you want to do. And some skills that's helped you be successful in your past career or in your past jobs. Now, paragraph two, you want to tell them how you heard about the company. Maybe the fact that I've been doing a lot of research, I've decided to make a job change, and I've selected XYZ company because I know that I can do a good job and meet the requirements of the position that you're offering. Now, you see that second part? That's when you look at the job description and you cite what you bring to the table. Look at the job descriptions. Change these bullet points each time to match what's in the job description. Now, I like five. I think five looks good. I don't like even numbers. I don't like four and three. Some call it not enough. I like five. Look at what the requirements are. And then take the most important thing, put that first, the next one, and the next one. Put them in order of importance. Don't copy them verbatim change them to your own words okay but that goes in here do not send a generic cover letter <coughs> to everybody this focuses on the specific job that you are going for you have to tell the reader how you meet the qualifications what you can do for the company and this goes with your resume obviously if you decide to now some some companies will say send a cover letter and your resume, some will say just a resume. If they're asking for a cover letter, make sure you send one. And put them on separate, uh, separate, um, what do you call it, um, additions. Don't put them on one, because they don't want it. Just separately, set, upload them separately. Don't put them on, don't put a cover letter and then just have this added to it. Paragraph three is close your letter close the letter with enthusiasm for the position your availability you are looking forward to an interview so i can 
explain to me how I can be a valuable contribution to your organization. Close it with some excitement, some looking forward to. I would like to get together with you and explain my qualifications and how I can be an asset to XYZ company and in your name. Um, let's see. Oh, it says anything I read, but that's what it says read. Does anything with star is to be changed per position, per company. So make sure that you allow for that in your cover letter. I don't know what time it is. We're doing good. It's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Mm -hmm. you got plenty of time. Oh, I've got plenty of time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I just about covered everything. Um, Pretty quick. Okay. Do you guys have anything else that you want to ask me? Yeah. So back to the resume, uh, when you're talking about the title, mm -hmm. um, so as a student, should we not have our name as like kind of the title? Like how should we write that out? Well, this is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. No. I didn't know if we, if we needed to have like a specific with what we're going after, like financial advice. You don't have a title here. Okay. Fantastic. If you look at this, go there. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? And you just, you put what you're going, what you're pursuing. What you're going for. What like, what might you be going for? What kind of position might you be going for? Financial advising. Okay. Financial advising? Yes. Okay, or it could be financial partner, financial support, whatever it is. Make sure you change that designated title before you do your um, summary statement. Okay. But they have to, that's got to match the position that you're going for. Yeah. Or else, that makes sense. Yeah, or else it won't make all yeah. sense to me either. Okay, um, should I talk about interviewing or anything? That, that and also the LinkedIn profile. Oh, I didn't do that. Oh, that's fine. You'll oh, talk about interviewing okay, then. We can talk about LinkedIn. Okay. Oh, let me just erase this. Martha, you got a question back here. Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm a from Martin Douglas, and the high school, like all these parents, is different in different levels of education at the high school. Hang on, 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 hang on,